Hi, I'm Dr. Bertie Sperry, and I want to tell you a story. When my family was growing up, we were extremely poor. We lived on the street that wasn't really a street. It was more like an alley. And there were two houses and a bunch of lime green garages, storage garages. Back in the day, there were wooden units of storage for other people. There were two houses, number four and number six. We used to live in number four. We moved to number six. Well, this family moved to number four, and they were self-proclaimed hillbillies that came from Kentucky, from the hills, hills of Kentucky. And to say they were poor is an understatement because they were poorer than us. <laughs> and that was hard to do. They had a little baby and a young son. And one day they um, were really down and they needed some money. And the man came to my mom to borrow some money. And he was a white man. And so for us, this was, you know, kind of odd that this white family was poorer than us to the kids in our minds, because we had been taught that poverty was about black people, right? So not true. So he comes over and we're kind of kids just listening. And he, he asks my mother for $20. And my mother had recently gotten paid, and so she had the $20, and she gave it to him. And I remember one of my brothers saying, why would you give him money? And you know, we don't have any money. And my mother said, shut up. She used to say, heish, heish. You know, they have a family. They have a little baby. Just because somebody's treated us bad doesn't mean we need to treat others bad. And she said, if you will turn around and miss mistreat someone who's poor when you're poor then you're lower than the person who mistreated you it's always stayed with me well he came back over after she gave him the twenty dollars and he had boxes and in these boxes were his his granny's dishes and it was his, his granny's china his granny's china he brought his grandmother's china over to us and he would not let my mother not take it. And he said, yeah, the way his people always did, if they borrowed something from you, they left something of value and you kept it until they gave you the, your money back. Well, this was also new to us. And we were like, whoa. So he came back one day with the $20 and got the china. But then probably a couple of weeks later, that china was back in our house because they needed money again. And then one night in the middle of the night before he had the chance to pay us back, they came over and they were outside and the wife was with them, baby in the arms, little boy. And it was late at night and we were kind of standing around my mother. And they said that they had to move. They had to leave suddenly and they didn't have the money to pay us back. But they wanted us to keep the china and my mother refused. She said, we are not going to keep your granny's china. We're just not going to do it. And he said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. All I have is my integrity. Don't let me, don't take my integrity. Don't take my integrity. It was like, wow. And so she said, well, do you have anything else? And so he took the, he brought over these boxes and he said, well, he would take the China if she would do this exchange. My brother opened the box and there was boxes of comic books. And my brother was like, Yes. And my mother was like, you don't have to do this. And he was like, please don't take my integrity. Please don't take my integrity. And so she took the comic books and she pressed in the wife's hand the little bit of money that she had. And that has stayed with me and teaches me daily. Listen, people. Linsky wrote this book back in 66 called Power and Privilege. And I'm afraid that all we look at is privilege and we don't look at power. We don't see that there is someone with power dangling the privilege carrot to make us think that one is more than the other, to make you think that you are more than somebody else, to keep us from coming together in a way that can truly change these dynamics. As things slow down and shut down for everybody, we need to look more closely and see that there is somebody who's controlling your strings you know that I'm not less than you, and I know that you're not less than me. But if we continue to think in ways that society has taught us and socialized us and maintain this systemic oppression, this systemic racism that keeps us from looking in each other's eyes and saying, <laughs> 
don't let me lose my integrity. We're connected. And if I treat you the way I was treated, then I'm no better than the person that treated me that way. But if you keep trying to treat me the way someone with the whole factory is treating you, then we will always fight over this one pie. I love you. It's time we bake some new pies.